Sai Ram. Welcome to all our viewers and we wish to share with you certain points that are of concern to all of us today. After Swami left, we are confronting many problems leading to confusion and people do not know what to do. People have no idea of what Baba said on these matters. And no one knows where the literature is available. We don't have anybody to consult and talk to. Therefore, we are in a confused condition, my friends. Let us accept it. We do not know the right direction. Nobody to, talk, nobody to tell us what the right direction is according to Swami. Nobody tell, to tell you that you are in the wrong path. Nobody. So we are just here by an accident. It should not be like that. We should be here by choice, not as a matter of accident. What are the problems that we are confronting today? What are the challenges that we meet today? Ever since Swami left his physical body. Some say, I see Swami in his subtle body. I see the subtle body of Swami. And the subtle body I only can see. No others can see. Subtle body speaks to me and no other person would hear. I only hear. Meaning, subtle body of Baba talks to some person, visible to some person, audible to that person, alone it appears to be patent rights. Very silly, very silly. Do we know what subtle body is? Then some people say, Swami is there as a light body. What do you mean light body? Does he carry any light with him or what? In fact, all of us should have light body. We should not be heavy. The obesity, heavy body. We should be thin and slim. That's why you should do some exercise. Do some exercise. Do some yoga asanas to have this light body. What do you mean by the light body? So, a Swami talks to me in his subtle body. I see Swami as a light body. What is all this claim? What is light body? What idea we have? Let us understand. Somebody will say, Swami speaks through me. Through me. Meaning, I am a medium for Bhagavan Baba. Uh-huh. Where is certificate? Do you have Aadhar card or Pan card? Or any certificate, any acknowledgement, any authorization authorizing you to be a medium? Did Baba say that? Did he give in writing that so and so will be my will be my medium? Did Baba say that? And some would say that medium is preferable to us because Swami speaks through the medium. Next stage, some say, I am a communicator. Uh-huh. What do you communicate? Swami communicates through me. Nonsense. You may communicate what you want. You may communicate what you know, what you believe in. How do you say that Swami communicates through you? Do you mean say all these people who have their conscience telling them, what is to be done is not Swami. Do you mean to say that Swami is not speaking to them? Do you mean to say you are only the communicator? Am I a fool to believe you? Don't have that much of common sense that there cannot be any communicator to Swami. Impossible. He communicates to one who, who has pure heart. He communicates to one who is of pure love, selfless love. Faith in Him. Anybody can be a communicator. If you have faith, love in Him. Follow His teachings scrupulously. 
he is the communicator you cannot say i am the communicator no 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 so medium is wrong communicator is false subtle body is totally is, is totally bunkum cooked up thing light body cannot exist everybody should have light body and also some say in dreams so swami tell me these things ah uh, why does he not tell me why should he tell you some fellow comes and tells me swami told me in my dream to give your car to me then what my answer is i don't give him car like that let swami appear in my dream tell me to give my car to him he won't tell you to give my car he will tell me and there is one person who tell swami told me in my dream to mortgage your house to sell out to your house and give it to me aha uh -huh. you should say swami will never say like that swami will never say sell out your house give it to me he will never say that give me your car to me he will never say that and further there are some people that says swami appeared in my dream wanted you to do this and why should he tell you do you mean he did he did like that all these years all the buildings the colleges and the universities and hospitals have come into existence because it is one to one direct relationship swami inspires you swami motivates you swami talks to you from within there is no reporter there is no postman there is nobody like that so let us be aware of these dreamers let us be very careful about them some people say you want to speak to swami you tell me i will tell you or you want to reply i'll get from him meaning he is an intermediary are you an intermediary are you go between two individuals no that's not possible how can i believe you who are you to convey my request to swami i can pray i can pray i can speak to my swami within me and you don't need to ask swami get reply from him not necessary he give a reply to me how he has been guiding all devotees all over the world because he is antaryami he is indweller in our human heart let us understand that and there are also some people that uh, are interested in raising funds very good in the name of swami swami made make clear many times spirituality and money can never go together impossible god and mammon will never go together let us understand Swami is not for collection of funds. Swami is not here for any business. He doesn't like anybody to do business on his name. So we, we have we do business outside. Let us do business here also. Appears to be temperament, attitude of some people most unfortunately. But we don't bother if they make business in any other way, but not on the name of Swami. there are many business people why not reliance group ambani's adani's oh millionaires bill rockefeller bill gates there are many many people rich people they do business nothing wrong about it but they don't do in the name of sai they don't make his name to make business so let me talk to you on these aspects for some time hope you join me understand me with the due sympathy concern we sharing all my anxiety and worry that has been with me ever since swami left let me talk to you first of all on this subtle body how far seeking it is i tell you i see swami in his subtle body he talks to me i talk to me to him you don't others don't hear i see him others don't see him that is the subtle body where is the authenticity for the statement 
where is the credibility for the statement can you show any authority no let me tell you what baba said in the year 2006 march what does he say he said what is a subtle body what is a subtle body he explained very clearly subtle body is composed of 17 components five senses of cognition gnanendriyas five senses of action karmendriyas five subtlenesses subtlenesses tanmatras five mind and intellect 17 these 17 components constitute subtle body that's what baba said now underline this point which i want to you subtle body disappears with the death when man is dead and gone his subtle body won't come and visit me farce there should be some madness there should be some method in madness you cannot fool everybody like that what well, do you have any idea of subtle body as said by baba these points i said are from sai literature panch gnanendriyas panch karmendriyas panch tanmatras 15 16 mind 17 intellect that makes subtle body which dies which disappears with death so if i say i see subtle body means am i here or not am i also gone what do you mean why do you want to cheat people like that and further we should also understand that the subtle body what is in another lecture swami said this what does he say it contains life force the breathing prana it contains the mind manas and intellect buddhi three most important prana manas buddhi vital force mind intellect they make the subtle body which also goes with the departed soul so in either way what he said we cannot accept subtle body under any circumstances appearing to anybody talking to somebody and seen only to someone unseen to somebody why this drama is not necessary is not worth it is not worth it what a sacrilege that we are doing to swami's teachings may god forbid such people who have such claims and then you know to dr john hislop a very famous man in the month of july 26th 1972 what he told me what he told hislop is this hislop look here we have three bodies one is the physical body gross body second is the subtle body and third is causal body the physical body is what that you see bhautika and second is subtle body sukshma the sthula is the gross body sukshma subtle body third causal body karana so we have three bodies one is sthula the gross body second is subtle body sukshma the third one is causal karana that's what he told his love then what is this gross body my personality the muscle the bone the height weight chest this is the subtle body and then this is the gross body i'm sorry the muscle the bone flesh everything is the gross body that's what you see my whole personality weight chest everything complexion everything goes under this gross body sthula sharira the second one is subtle body the subtle body has three components one pranamaya kosha that is vital sheath the vital sheath the second one is vijnanamaya kosha the intellectual sheath and the third one is mental sheath manomaya kosha in other words we have vital sheath 
intellectual sheet and mental sheet. Three sheet sheets covering. Sheet means covering. There are five coverings, you know, just as they are wearing some coat and a shirt and a banyan. This individual soul has five. One is what we call Annamaya Kosha, the food sheet. The grass body is because of food stuff that we eat. So grass body, Stola Sinira, is only Annamaya Kosha, food sheet. Then comes this subtle, subtle body. And this subtle body has three sheets. What are they? Manomaya Kosha, the mental sheet, and then vital sheet, the Pranamaya Kosha, and the intellectual sheet, Vijnanamaya Kosha. These three sheets continue, constitute the subtle body. And then causal body, Karana Deha, it consists of only one, that is Anandamaya Kosha, the bliss sheet. That is what you call bliss sheet or conscious sheet, consciousness. I think I am clear. Stula, Sukshma, Karana. Stula, grass body, Annamaya Kosha, food sheet. Sukshma, vital sheet, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, mental sheet, Vijnanamaya Kosha, intellectual sheet, bus. And third, causal body, Annamaya Kosha, five Koshas. And now, Causal body, Karana body will remain. The other two are dead and gone. Grass body, finish. When the life is gone, it is gone. And along with that, subtle body is also gone. Stula and Sukshma are perishable. They are prone to death. But causal body is eternal. It will remain. It will be continued life to life, birth to birth. That's what Baba said. So when I say I am the subtle body, what a foolish statement it is. Sukshma, the subtle body goes away when the stula, when the body is burnt or buried. Only Karana Deha stays there and it goes on life to life, birth to birth. That's what Baba said to John Islam. Long, long back. All right. What shall I do now? All right. I have three bodies and bottle body, grass body. Wow, wow, wow. So many things. Okay. What am I to do now? Baba clearly said. Turn your mind, the mental sheet, towards intellect. Turn your mind towards intellect. Mm. Manas towards buddhi. When the mind is turned towards intellect, you know what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. But we don't turn our mind to intellect. We turn our mind to physical sheath, the grass body. When it is given to the physical form, what happens? Total ruin. So our duty is to divert, to direct our mind towards intellect, buddhi, and not towards the body, the sharira, the grass body. That's what Bhagavan said. My friends, Swami also said, light body, it can be also called Taijasa. Taijasa. Therefore, Taijasa is the name given to this light body. Light body is also called Taijasa. These are all from Sai's teachings only. Nothing is our of my own, my friends know this. So, subtle body is also called Taijasa, light body. And now, this is important. This light body is limited to dreaming state only. <laughs> subtle body is limited to dreaming state only. Swapna. So, when I say subtle body speaks to me means the fellow who speaks is in a dreaming state. State. The fellow who follows him is also in a dreaming state. Both are equally dreamers. Is not that. Is no validity at all. So the question of subtle body, the question of light body, can be dismissed totally because it disappears with death. Second, it is limited to dreaming state only. And then. 
let me come to another aspect medium we have got so many forms of medium media today some say i can talk to some people from a distance i can see people from a distance i can hear people from a distance these are all things that we find in psychology and parapsychology in books if you go through those books parapsychology you find all these words telepathy we find telepathy is a medium and we also clairvoyance and also we hear clairsentience clairvoyance telepathy well here is one point swami six speaks to me it means i cannot claim to be a medium why spirits dead spirits spirits who left us like our fathers forefathers may speak to you may make you a medium but not god god will never make you a medium your grandfather who is gone long back can make you a medium your forefathers take you as a medium but not god because god is not gone god is very much alive is eternal he is within us therefore to say that i hear him telepathy i see him i view him clairvoyance that's all nonsensical claims that it's clearly said by anderson in his study of parapsychology he said spirits convey through medium baba is not a spirit baba is not a spirit so this argument is also null and void this baba said july 7th 1990 please kindly note these points and then what does he say you know in some villages in village people who are really rustic and rural uh, one fellow says i am the medium guru speaks through me yes i will communicate to you what our guru wants you to know aha uh -huh. that's what people say that it is meaningless it is meaningless and these fools believe it oh you are the medium they keep incense in front of him put garlands and they bow down to his feet both are equally fools both are equally mad because you cannot be a medium and you cannot believe a medium why because in march 4 1962 baba said it is all false it is all hypocrisy don't follow them that's what swami said clearly further he said and this beautiful statement that i want all of you to remember if i say baba is in me and speaking through me and the medium of baba do you know what baba said very good very clearly said he will not fill inferior vessels inferior vessels our body is inferior our body is not pure he is he won't occupy that kind of body he won't possess that kind of body which is impure full of falsity full of false claims selfishness i won't go nothing like that and therefore i won't possess anybody i won't enter into impure bodies that's what baba said my humble submission to all of you is based on these statements never run after a medium i am the medium who said stop that medium i got atmic medium i got atmic medium not this this body medium you may follow your medium but i follow my medium of atma that's what we should talk to people that's what you say and swami says those that follow such medium such false people they ruin their their, their lives that's what baba said that's what swami says don't ruin your lives by following medium like that that's what baba said this is a wonderful statement what baba said is this do you mean that the mediums are like glass pieces can they equal god avatar diamond can these glass pieces ever be equal to a diamond 
glass trink trinkets from its head. Glass trinkets, the shining glass pieces, can never equal a diamond. So how do I say I mean, I come down to the level of glass piece? Impossible. I want you to be a diamond, but you want to become a glass piece. And you want pieces. And you will be torn to pieces ultimately. Understand it. That's what he said. Therefore, don't follow anybody who claims to be the medium, as he said. And then, good. What he said in March 27th, 1965. What did he say? I come straight to you. I talk to you directly. Love to love, heart to heart. I don't need anybody. There is no third person, no recommendations, no postman, no middleman. Relationship is straight and direct. That's what Baba said long back. I don't possess anybody. I don't need any vehicle for my expression. That's what Swami said. Further he said, I come to you as I am. Underline that point. I come to you as I am. It means you won't come in the form of Anil Kumar to you. You won't come in the form of some yes, some why, some that. No, he comes to you as he is. As such a Sai Baba. Not in the name or form of anybody. Please understand it. That's what Swami said very clearly. Now, the question is, somebody will say, all right, sir, you don't accept me as a medium. Okay. But I'm a communicator. So you were a subtle body at one time. You are a light body at one time. And you are a medium at one time. Now you are a communicator at one time. Very good. You want to fool me by all these false claims. How long, my boy? How long? How? Please stop it at some stage. I don't allow myself to be fooled throughout my life. Can I say I'm a communicator? I can only be a translator but not a communicator. I can be a translator but not a communicator. Impossible. And here Swami said March 27th, 1965. Swami said, I don't need any communicators at all. There are no communicators for me. He clearly said. He clearly said it. Why a simple example? I said, Swami, somebody is waiting for you. He said, well, do you think I don't know he has come there? Do you need to tell me? No recommendation, no communicators. Direct, you go inside, he said it. Go, that's right. I know he has come. I know when to call him. You don't need to recommend. You don't need to tell me. Based on my personal experience, I am telling you, my friends. He doesn't accept any communicators, any middlemen to operate. Then comes the other things. You see, dreams, intermediaries, dreams. Baba said in his book, Such as I Speaks, Such as I, Part 4, page 100, that's what he says this. You see, dreams are for the individual, not by and large. I cannot tell, go, go to America and say, Mr. Trump, I got a dream, so I should be become the America, President of America. He will say, Mr. Anil Kumar, what you said is correct. And he will call some psychiatrist and put me in lunatic asylum. I cannot be President of America because Swami told you my dream. Unless, unless I am a madcap. And I cannot tell anybody, let the whole college be shifted somewhere. Let MBA courses be shifted somewhere. It happened. One gentleman said, Swami appeared in my dream, wanted MBA courses to be shifted. And he wanted one of his cars also to be sent there. And fools believed it. Every fool will have foolish followers. We can't help them. At the most I can only pray, Father, they know not what they do, forgive them. Because when I choose to be foolish, 
when I prefer to be mad, mad, who can help me? And therefore Swami said, it's like that. Dreams are individual. You take care of your health. You go there. You do see the, do the sadhana. They are individual directions. They are individual uh, suggestions, advices as per our need. It's not for the whole country. It's not for the whole community. It's not like that. I cannot say these courts should be shifted there, cars should be taken there, few clothes also be kept there. I see. Where is the proof? Therefore, my friends, dreams, please listen to them with the benefit of doubt. Because Swami clearly said, dreams are totally individual. They are not collective, they are not societal. Be very clear about it. And then some go on giving publicity. <coughs> We had one great man <coughs> who is no more, <coughs> one vice chancellor, uh, Hanuman Tapa, I believe. He used to tell everybody in a public meeting, Swami took me to Vaikuntha, heaven, taught me all the chapters of Bhagavad Gita. In another lecture said, Swami has taken me to Kailasa, has shown me this. Boys are helpless, what to do? They were listening to him. But boys are boys. At the end of the meeting, few boys came to me. Sir, Swami has shown him the heaven. Why can't he drop him there? Why should he bring him back? <coughs> He's very comfortable. Leave him there. Therefore, it's not like that. Dreams are not for publicity. Dreams may be helpful to cheat others. Therefore, without any mercy, treat them as Cheats, as Baba said. Treat them as cheats without any mercy. Because then they tell you their dreams to, and dictate terms to you, which should not be done. That's what Baba said. And then, March 29th, 1965, that's what he said. In my dream, Swami said, you should donate one million dollars. In my dream, Swami told you to do, to construct this building. Oh, that's what Swami said. Never commanded anybody to collect funds. No. I never asked anybody to do this, to do that through somebody. Through the dreams. No believe, don't believe. Punish them, he said it. He would have said, tear them to pieces. I would have been more happy. <laughs> Punish them. He clearly said, in the way they deserve. If their dreams are going to put me to last, sell out my house, mortgage my property, who is the loser? Not that fellow, I am the loser. Therefore, punish them as they deserve, Baba said. That is the advice I give you. That's what Swami said. Advice I give you. Be careful. Don't lose your money. Don't lose your property. Don't lose your savings by listening to such dreamers who just concoct, manipulate, manage and claim uh, your, your belongings all to themselves. No. And one gentleman in his book, page 218, that book is Sri Satchasai Divya Krupasaya. Sanchya Sai Divya Kurpasaya is the title of the book. And on the page 218, what did he write? Swami does not like intermediaries. Swami does not like anybody to stand between him and others. He clearly said it. And then Swami has got his own formula, his own equation. From person to person, individual to individual, nobody can interpret, nobody can explain, nobody can represent or claim. Nothing like that. That's what Swami said. And again, Swami said, 1st of April 2006, that's what he said. Somebody said, Swami, he wanted me to ask some question. 
you give me the reply, I shall tell you. My friend has some question. I am asking you. If you give the answer, I will tell him. Friendliness. Do you know what Baba said? You can ask anything relating to you. Yourself, you can ask me anything related to you. I don't want you to bring before me your friend's doubts, your friend's questions. Let them come here. I don't want anybody to stand between me and my devotee. My relationship is straight and direct. That's what Baba said. And here he said, if any devotees say that, I will convey to Swami, I will convey to you, never believe them. He said, stop all such nonsense and give them good counseling, good advice and deny such fellows. That's what Swami clearly said, clearly. What happened to our common sense? What happened to our general knowledge? What happened to our devotion? What happened to our thinking mind? What happened to our intellect? There cannot be greater pitiable situation than this. We are most unfortunate people. With all the treasure of Sai literature, we are not aware of it. We are, have got the start of Sai teachings, we don't want it. We just run like this. Destiny, it is fate. Nobody can help us, my friends. God helps those who help themselves. We are prepared to help yourself. He is there always with the helping hand. And then, the bombshell he comes here now. July 2002, 22nd. Those people who do business in the name of Swami. He clearly said, I'm speaking with all authority, with all authenticity, as in a court, just as advocate, pleads on behalf of his own client, taking that book, law book on hand, I'm showing you, Swami's teachings is my law book now. I'm just showing you what he said in this context, quoting you with the dates also. I'm sure that you don't doubt me unless you, you want to be uh, doubtful, unless you're a doubting Thomas, unless you love to doubt, I can't help you. If you love to doubt, come completely doubt. Some say Atma Venasyati. Bhagavad Gita says, those who doubt shall perish. That's what he said. So, at least you should listen to Swami's teachings doubtlessly, at least. What does he say? Don't do business on my name. That's what is going on today, which he cautioned long back in the year 2002, in the month of July. Very clearly said it. There are some people not on that. He is also aware of all. He is on Hamtar Yami. He repeatedly says, I am above you, below you, in you, around you. Yes, does he not know where I am going? He knows. He says, he said this, some people go around different countries, different places to collect money. Is it not going on today? Has it not, has he not cautioned long back? People go to different places, different countries and collect funds on my name. Don't do that. I don't like it. To make money, I don't like it. He said, it is a big crime, he said. It's a big crime to go with a begging bowl, begging bowl to different places and to collect funds. And said, I never approve such business. I never approve such business. Swami clearly said, and finally he said, tell them to get out, he said. Tell them who make business on my name, ask them to get out. That's what Swami told everybody. And do not allow business to enter in the field of spirituality. That's what Baba said. Never collect funds, never solicit donations for anybody. And don't say that Swami appointed few agents to collect money. I have no agents like that. I have no association whatsoever. Such cheaters, such deceitful persons. That's what Baba said. So funds and agents and business have nothing to do with Swami. Now, my friends, before I close and take leave from you, I would like to draw your attention to one important factor, very important factor. 
what is our role? There are some people who say, Swami will take care of it. Uh -huh. Is Swami taking care of your bank deposits? Is Swami taking care of your lunch and breakfast and all that? Is Swami taking care of your foolishness? Is He taking care of your madness? Is He taking care of your ego? Why do you dare that? Never Swami will take I see. He will take care of you for not discharging your duty. He will take be take care, take care. Don't say he it is his, what is your responsibility? What is your job? So what Swami said clearly, our role today, that's what it appeared in Sanatana Sarathi and also in the book written by Howard Murphett, Man of Miracles, page 147 to 148. What did he write? What did he say? People for fame and money, they go on also misusing my name. They misuse my name. They abuse my name to become famous and to become rich for their personal gains. So our role as Baba said, you have to explain things clearly. Explain things clearly to everybody. This is not what Baba said. This is not what Baba expected from you. Baba will not accept such things. Explain clearly. Rather say, Sami will take care of what is it? What nonsense you speak? Don't do that. And then explain as manifestations of spirits or sheer fakes. Explain the what is fake. What is reality? What is true? So, as I devotees, your responsibility, our responsibility, to know the truth and to declare the truth to everybody, to the entire community, as I devotees, is not any single man's job. It is job of every devotee, because he is your God. He is your personal God. He is your personal property. He is your life. It is your duty to save God and also see that it will never be put to misuse or abuse. Thank you. We'll meet again. Thank you for your time.